Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In our last video, we learned that we should never isolate these gender interaction guidelines or generally the hijab guidelines from the purpose and objective of the Islamic law, which is to prevent an individual or the society from zina, from the fornication, from premarital and extramarital relationship, and may Allah protect all of us and our kids from zina. I mean, Europe. In this video, we're going to see what are the gender interaction guidelines which we should abide by. But now we have enough guardrails of the objective of maqsad of these guidelines. So the maqsad is to prevent from the zina. Okay, what are those guidelines which we learned from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding the gender interaction? After having the intention of not having zina, so this should be the first built-in by default guideline that the intention should never be when you are interacting with the stranger of opposite gender, the intention should never be to have zina. The first practical guideline will be, or the first practical step will be whenever a man or a woman are talking, whether you're talking to your colleague in the work or in the school or in the masjid or Islamic organization, you should have respect in your eyes. You should have respect in your gaze. You should not check each and everything out. You should just have a respectful way of looking at each other. That's the number one thing which we should uh, pay attention and there are multiple Quranic ayat, there are multiple ahadith which speaks about the importance of keeping respect in our eyes. Second guideline is that when a man and a woman are talking, strangers, whether at work, in a school, Islamic organization, second guideline will be that they should have a professional way of talking to each other, not personal. Useful conversation is fine, but useless is not okay. Uh, and for every culture, uh, we all are smart enough to distinguish what is useful and what is useless. But this is extremely important. I see in some Islamic organization, Islamic workers are getting too casual. Uh, we can never, we should never be too relaxed or too strict, which is affecting our productivity. Rather, we should follow the guidelines of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So again, first is having respect and eyes. Second is be professional in your conversation, not too personal. Third, third when you are communicating with the stranger of opposite gender, the third guideline will be that avoid physical contact. If you have to communicate in Islamic organization, in work, in school, try to avoid physical contact. No shaking of hands, no hugging. That's not our culture. And actually even give enough space to each other. Don't stay, stand very close to each other. Uh, so that will provide the comfortable space to the other person. That is also uh, very important. And all of this is coming from Quran and Sunnah. I don't have time in this short video to give you the references. So third is avoid physical contact as much as you can. Um, and then fourth, and I would say the last, uh, but not the least, um, is that avoid meeting in private. Even though you're discussing something professionally, seeing each other in a respectful way, not touching each other. But if you are dis if you are sitting alone in one room while door is closed, then it goes against the guidelines of the Islam and naturally uh, means who will deny of the attraction between the man and woman. So Islam took these proactive uh, approaches to protect all of us from this haram and from this temptation. We should be very careful. If you're working in Islamic organization, it does not give you an exemption that you can pass uh, and you can exempt yourself. Yes, there are exceptional cases like a doctor and a patient. There are exceptional cases. In, I'm pretty sure there are exceptional cases in um, Islamic paradigm also but generally generally these four guidelines if you pay attention to these four guidelines your intention the fifth one let's say if that's nice then eventually inshallah our conversation with the stranger of opposite gender will be according to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if any of these guidelines or multiple guidelines are missing then there are chances that our conversation is going in the direction of south and it might have the impact of haram. We won't say necessarily because of the emergency situation, but it can take our conversation to the haram direction. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us wisdom to understand this inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullahu khairan.